Goldman Sachs, along with others, downgrading Tesla. Kathy Wood selling millions of stock and Cybertruck deliveries coming very soon. We have a lot to get through and hopefully this video will settle your mind a little bit or at least just tell you why I'm not panicking about some of this perhaps negative news. First up, we're gonna cover Kathy Wood selling millions of Tesla shares. So Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Management have been selling a fair bit of Tesla recently. And on Friday, they sold 27,841 shares of Tesla for $7.1 million. So the closing price that they sold for was $556.60. And this Tesla sell-off that they did was done through two of their main funds. So the ARK Innovation ETF, which has the ticker symbol ARKK, and the ARK Next Generation Internet ETF, ARKW. As of time of filming this video, Tesla is still the largest holding in both of these ETFs. So the ARK team have been purchasing Tesla shares throughout 2023, I guess trying to get a low price for it. And then they've been selling quite a bit in June. And I think this means in total, she's now sold 780,000 shares of Tesla, which might seem crazy. And seeing the news that such a big investment name, a big company that you've all heard of, I'm sure, is selling loads of Tesla is kind of concerning, right? Because you're thinking, okay, well, they're selling for a reason. Something must be happening. Either I'm missing it and the stock is going to zero or they know something that I don't and soon I'm gonna get the news that I've lost all my money on Tesla stock. If that's what you're thinking, firstly, take a deep breath, don't panic. Let me explain why you do not need to worry about seeing news like this. So I wanna just say quickly that Kathy Wood and the whole ARC team have made it very known that they are massive, massive Tesla bulls. They are so bullish on this company and they spent a lot, a lot of time researching what Tesla are doing, what could be upcoming for Tesla, you know, putting together their own models. They're very, very bullish. And they also have some of the most seemingly high and wild price predictions for Tesla stock in the upcoming years. I made a whole video about this and I will link it up there somewhere now if you do wanna check that out, it was a very fun video. So what I'm trying to say is it's not because they are sitting there thinking that Tesla is a bad investment. That's not the reason that they're selling. I mean, I haven't actually sat down and spoken to them so I can't know this for sure, but they've done it time and time again. They've purchased in, they've sold out, so have many other companies with, you know, not just even Tesla stock, many stocks out there. It's a very common thing that we see. So they've sold before and then they've purchased and then they've sold again. And hey, they're gonna do both of these things in the future too. It's a strategic move. Whether it's a good one or not, a good strategic call or not, is kind of up to you to decide, but it's not because they think Tesla is not gonna be valuable in the future. That's not the reason. You have to remember when seeing headlines like this, that this is a massive investment company. It's not a single individual like myself or yourself managing our portfolios. And we wouldn't, if we're long-term investors, we probably wouldn't sell Tesla because we think it's gonna be more valuable in the future. But this is not the same case because they are managing on behalf of other people. Of course, when you're doing that, you're not just making a decision based on your own investment choices. You've got to make a decision that fits with everyone you're investing for. And there are kind of some rules and some ideologies, whatever, that you kind of have to stick by when you're making those decisions. And sometimes when they see a position that they hold go really high, they might decide just to skim some off of the top and take some profit because of course that will make their ETF performance look good. And they are a business at the end of the day, so they are gonna want their performance in their ETF to look good so that they can get more investors into it. But I don't necessarily think that they sold a lot of Tesla shares because they were taking profit. I think it comes down to them managing and rebalancing their portfolio. It's more of a structural issue, right? As far as I understand, they try to keep their positions to no more than about 10%. Not exactly 10%, but that as a kind of barrier. And when their positions do particularly well, that weighting then goes up and then they trim some to bring it back down. It's rebalancing. This is what an actively managed fund does. You are paying someone to manage your ETF for you. 
because you don't want to have to do that yourself. So you don't just go down the route of having a passive ETF, a uh, passive index fund. You're going to get an actively managed ETF like with the ARK funds and they will do that rebalancing and they will be picking what's in that fund for you. If Kathy buys 10% of Tesla, in one of her funds and then the price of the Tesla stock goes really really high then that 10% is worth more than 10%. So what they do is they then sell some off, they take the profit and then that drops to under 10%, maybe 8 or 9% now that they've sold. And then they wait for the price to drop, they buy in again and they top that up to 10%. And this happens multiple times a year and that is how they make money. She's literally just rebalancing. She's doing what she needs to do. So don't worry, she's not selling because she thinks this stock's going to zero. So you stick to your conviction and your goal and your plan and just let her do her thing because we're, you know, we're in very different positions, right? I'm investing individually with a little amount of money for my own financial freedom. She is managing so much money on behalf of other people. It's very different scenarios. Right now, actually, I think the ARK K fund is 12.15% Tesla by weighting and the ARK W is 8.08%. So I actually don't think she's done selling. We might see some more for her to bring that 12% back down to around 10. I hope that settled your mind. Now let's move on to Goldman Sachs downgrading Tesla. When we see companies that we trust, like Goldman Sachs, like Barclays, selling stock that we own, like Tesla, we get a little bit worried. And it's kind of all come at a bad time because we've had these downgradings and then we've had the ARC team selling a lot of Tesla. And these two things have happened at the same time. And this means that lots of people are starting to panic. And then that means that they sell some of their Tesla. And what does that do to the stock price? Well, it brings it down. And that's why yesterday, Monday, the stock price of Tesla fell by quite a, a large amount, really. On Sunday, on Sunday evening, Goldman Sachs analyst Mark Delaney downgraded Tesla stock from a buy to neutral. Just in case you didn't know, when an analyst is given a buy rating, it means they are basically recommending you to buy the stock at that time. A sell recommendation is literally that, to sell out of the position or even short the stock. And then a neutral is basically another way of saying, hold the stock, don't buy, don't sell. So he moved his Tesla rating from a buy to neutral, to a hold. So he no longer thinks you should be buying this company, instead just hold it. So that is a downgrade. So we had this downgrade in rating, but we didn't see this accompanied with a reduction in price target. We actually saw them increase Tesla's price target from $185 per share to $248 per share. This new 248 is still not where the stock is, but it's higher than what they had predicted for this stock previously. So we had the downgrade in rating, but an upgrade in price target. So they're not actually saying they are decreasing the price target as well. So he said, we're downgrading shares to neutral from buy. We believe the stock now better reflects our positive long-term view of the company's growth positioning. While the primary reason for the change is that we think the market is now giving the stock more credit for its longer term opportunities post the recent rally, we're also cognizant of the difficult environment for new vehicles that we think will continue to weigh on Tesla's automotive non-gap gross margin this year. Overall, we believe our view that Tesla is well positioned for long-term growth, given its leading position in the EV and clean energy market, which we attribute in part to its ability to offer full solutions, including charging, storage, software, full self-driving, and services with a direct sales model, is now better reflected in the stock. So essentially, they still think Tesla is gonna do wonderful things in the future, but they're downgrading it right now because they believe the stock price shot up with the AI frenzy. We'll get into that in a bit as well. And they believe that the macroeconomic situation is gonna be quite difficult for automotive companies. They're not just automotive. Automotive companies like Tesla to continue to do well in. It makes sense. It's kind of a very typical analyst view. They have to look at the macroeconomic market at this time and make decisions based on that. Mark Delaney, the analyst from Goldman Sachs that we're speaking about here, has generally been quite bullish on Tesla. But I do think it's worth pointing out, just to reassure you a little bit, 
that these analysts, just like myself and you, they don't know what's gonna happen next. No one knows and no one can time the market. And there's been many times that a professional analyst has downgraded a stock and then very recently following that, the stock has done really well. So no one actually knows. I believe at Goldman Sachs and maybe a few other companies downgraded Tesla this April following the Q1 earnings and in December last year as well. And then the stock went on a massive run following those two downgrades. So it just goes to show you that, you know, you don't need to take everything these guys are saying quite literally. Have a look into why they're saying it, you know, what their biases may be, what they need to base their research on and make your own decisions. Use that, use your own research and, you know, put it all together. But Mark Delaney wasn't the only Wall Street analyst to change their rating of Tesla recently. Barclays and Morgan Stanley did a similar thing. They were basically saying that the stock run up has been due to the AI craze companies joining the supercharging network and tax breaks that the vehicles are getting. Obviously having three different analysts representing big firms downgrading Tesla publicly is not great for the stock, but we've seen this time and time again. And it's also worth pointing out that sometimes, I'm not saying all of them, but sometimes Wall Street analysts are actually known for misvaluing Tesla and looking at them only as being an automotive company rather than everything else that they're doing, but make your own judgment. So we've had those two pieces of slightly negative news in terms of what they do for the stock, but now let's talk about some positive news, the Cybertruck and how it's probably gonna be released very soon. So last week it was reported that a Tesla Cybertruck has been spotted landing in New Zealand to undergo its final winter testing as Tesla finalized development before production. So usually Tesla will use their own grounds in Alaska to do these winter testing. But of course, when it's summer over here, well, in America, it's winter in New Zealand and Australia. So it just makes sense to do the winter testing there now, rather than holding it up and waiting for winter to arrive in the US. The Cybertruck itself is expected to be able to perform in very harsh conditions in difficult snow and difficult ice. So they will be testing the ability for the car to actually be able to do that. And it has undergone winter testing, I believe, before, but this is like the final stage before they hit the go button. You might be wondering why I'm even saying this, because of course Tesla do testing on their vehicles before release. Like, of course they do, they have to. But the reason that this is causing a lot of excitement is because we've seen a similar thing with other Tesla models in the past, where they have sent them for winter testing just a couple of months before they release. And I believe it was expected that the Cybertruck was expected for release in Q3 of 2023 at the end of Q3. So actually this all kind of aligns and I expect that we might be seeing the Tesla Cybertruck release happening around the end of August, beginning of September. And hopefully this will mean good things for the stock. Another quick thing to add in here that's quite exciting is that a professional drone uh, pilot named Joe has released footage showing that two 9,000 ton Giga press machines are now fully assembled. And why is this important for the Cybertruck news? Well, it's because these machines are actually used to produce the uh, large underbody castings of the actual Cybertruck. So I think we're gonna see this very soon. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it settled your mind a little bit if you were starting to get panicked about some of the news that we've been recently seeing. Thank you, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon in another.